So today I want to talk about why it is impossible to live like you are on a developmental path that you are simply not on. So when people say that they live like or live as uh, another sex, I want to talk about this in terms of our uh, hol holistic developmental path. So to speak about the scientific categorization of organisms according to their form and function, each of these is a kind of developmental path that we are on and they uh, get more and more specific as we go down this line, you know, kind of from kingdom all the way to, to genus and species. So uh, to say, to talk about that developmental path is to say, uh, I am an animal. I'm not a plant or a fungus. I am a mammal. <laughs> I'm not a reptile or a fish or a bird. I am a primate. Uh, I am not a rodent or a canine. And I am a human. I'm not a great ape or a monkey. Okay. Uh, and then uh, very specifically in that category of human, uh, I am a woman. That's, that's my developmental path. These are, these are all developmental paths. Now, um, it is impossible to live like or live as a developmental path that you're simply not on. Uh, and that's why I always, say bodies are not identities. Uh, being an animal is not an identity. I'm not an animal because I identify as one. Uh, that is not what differentiates me from being a plant. Being an animal is my physical form and function. It's what I am physically experiencing uh, regardless of any identity concept that I hold about myself. Uh, so <laughs> regardless of what I think about myself, uh, I am an animal. I will never be able to um, uh, 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 absorb nutrients through a process of photosynthesis. Uh, I need to eat them. <laughs> I need to chew nutrients and eat them and swallow them and digest them with my digestive system. That's because I'm an animal, I'm not a plant. Uh, so all of these categories have different things. I, you know, whether I like it or not, I'm warm blooded. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a mammal uh, because I think I am. It's just the what it's, it's the what, it's the basis, it's the baseline of my physical experience. And so it is to be a man or a woman. It's just the what, it's the what of my physical experiencing. And um, so when men say that they can live like or live as a woman, they simply cannot because the only thing that differentiates women from men is being on a particular kind of developmental path. Men can't live like they are on a path that they're simply not on. And whatever men do to externally alter their body, they remain men experiencing themselves as men, feeling their male feelings, feeling their male body. They can't ever stop feeling their male body and they can't begin to feel female feelings because the only feelings associated with being a female are those of our developmental path, um, those of our internal organs, of our, our development over time. Uh, and these paths are a development over time. It's not static. It's a developmental path. It's, it's a lifelong uh, development. So men cannot feel this developmental path. They uh, cannot feel any of the parts of it. And here's the thing, they never stop feeling their male body. Okay, they can't stop feeling it. They are always processing the physical sensations of their male body. They're never feeling the sensations of a female body. So this is really important because um, the ideology that we are dealing with in the culture uh, is one of abstraction and conceptualization. And this is a kind of disembodiment. This is a kind of dissociation from one's body. Um, to be in true integrity with one's body is to claim one's body. Okay, if men take hormones, if men um, uh, invert <laughs> their penis, if they they have an orchidectomy, I think it's called, and have their, um, their, their testicles removed. That's a specifically male experience. That's a uniquely male experience, okay? That, that only happens to males. Women can't go through this experience because we don't have that organ. So um, this is to say, however they uh, externally alter their body, they are still on a male developmental path and feeling those male feelings. Uh, even if they are perceived, even if they um, achieve achieve such a level of mimicry that they are perceived as the opposite sex, they are still living as men 
who are perhaps perceived as the opposite sex. They are still living as men. They're never living as women, okay? Now, this is really important because that's an objectification of women. To say that living as a woman is to externally appear as a woman, that's an objectification of our humanity. That is to turn women into a thing, an object, and to equate looking like the object with being the object. But women are not objects. We are fully embodied, whole human beings. And this is why I talk about it as a developmental path. Uh, and this is why I talk about it in terms of all living organisms. Because once we put it in terms of all living organisms, uh, we see that humans are just, we're living organisms. Men and women, we are living organisms. Uh, and we should embrace the bodies that we have and the organisms that we are. Uh, and we should not try to deny or dissociate from what we are, nor should we objectify one another. It's harmful to women. Feminists have been pointing out this critique for ages. It's harmful to objectify women, to turn them into things and objects. Um, it's objectifying to say that you can purchase certain things. You can purchase surgeries and purchase drugs uh, in order to be a woman. We are not commodities. We are not things that you can purchase and put on and appear as. We are humans. Do you see how important that is to our humanity? We are human beings and there's no right or wrong way to exist in your body. There's no right or wrong way to be a man uh, or a woman. And this is a really important lesson for our children. The basic building blocks of safeguarding begin with our embodiment, with our instincts, with our intuitions, with our sense perceptions. All right, I'm going to leave it there for today because this is a long TikTok. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.